In 2007, uh, Peter, who was at the time in the Institute of Sustainability Technology Policy at Murdoch, um, attended a, a community breakfast talking about uh, the issue of carbon neutral um, and uh, the need to address this major issue. Um, at the end of the meeting, Bart Howan from Bendigo Bank, Fremantle Community Bank, came and said, well, what can we do to do this at a community level? And Peter spontaneously said, well, we're involved in the local school. Why don't we see if the school can become carbon neutral? Um, so next week, we organised a breakfast meeting and there must have been eight people come. We all got together and there was huge enthusiasm. And uh, as a result of that, the principal agreed to uh, put up some money from the school to employ a carbon neutral officer. The reason I was so interested in it is that we embarked on a journey and no one could really tell the final product. And we knew though along the way lots of things would happen, new partnerships, and that would bring energy to the school. So we started. As soon as I started the school, we employed an independent auditor to look at what our carbon footprint was. We ended up with a carbon footprint of 567 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions. So my job was to turn 567 tonnes to zero. We had a plan and the plan was to do three things. One was to reduce our carbon emissions by behavioural change. So turning off lights, turning off computers, using heaters and cooling devices carefully. Retrofitting, replacing dud equipment with equipment that is more efficient. The second thing was to purchase renewable energy, either installing solar panels, wind turbines, and also purchasing green power from Synergy. So all that energy would come from a renewable resource. And the third thing was carbon sequestration by tree planting. You know, our audit document, we took the audit document and I looked at where our biggest emitters of greenhouse emissions were and our biggest emitter of was lighting. Uh, so I got a lighting engineer in and said, you know, what can we do about reducing that? He said $100,000. I said, great, I'll wait till I get $100,000. When the project began, I had no budget, but there were so many other things to do that didn't require money. And I think, for me, that's the big message of the Carbon Neutral Project. Just because you've got no money, you don't have to spend money. There's lots of things you can do by engaging with the staff and students, by doing any of the 34 recommendations in the audit document that are either low cost or no cost. One of the early things we did was um, switch to waterless urinals, which is quite a funny story. When I first started at the school, my first day, I went, I'd been in the job for two hours and I went to coffee and one of the teachers said to me, Kathy, what you need to do is to fix the toilets in the music centre, the urinal in the music centre. And I thought, hmm, okay, well, there you go. I didn't really know that's what a carbon neutral project officer would be doing, but that's... So then he went on to explain that the, the urinal flushed every five minutes, 24 hours a day, which is really ridiculous. This is a school, you know, there's people in the buildings 30 hours a week. So I researched waterless urinals and we switched to waterless urinals, turned the water off, got bioabsorbers in and reduced our water consumption by 98% in the urinals. And that year we saved $7,000 in water. So with that $7,000, um, we replaced all the 40-year-old single flush toilets with dual flush toilets, four-star dual flush toilets. And of course we made more savings. The school paid my wages for the first 18 months and now my salary comes from um, energy, from utility savings. So the utility savings fund my, my role at the school two days a week and the surplus is used on retrofitting. Right at the beginning of the project, um, I was at a function and met an importer of solar panels and he was just starting up his business and we were just chatting and he said, you know, if you got people from the school to buy solar panels and then we'd donate a system to the school and I thought, oh, that's a great idea, you know, raise the issue of renewable energy in the community and through the school. So 25 people who were friends or parents of the school um, put on solar panels and we got a, they put on a one kilowatt system and we got a kilowatt system donated to the school. So I thought that was really a really innovative thing for the school to be involved in. And not long after that, um, the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, and she was the Minister of Education, Julia Gillard, asked to come to the school because of the carbon neutral project, because it was a unique project in Australia. 
So while she was here, she unveiled the, the new solar panels. We took Julia Gillard and Melissa Park, our local member of parliament, on a tour around the school and to the boys' toilets, as you do, and other aspects of the carbon neutral project. Even though the project was still in infancy then, there was enough things to, to talk about and, and show her, and of course the students were showing her around the school. Every year 10 student in this school goes tree planting in the wheat belt. That's about carbon sequestration. And we were in 2J where there had been enormous bushfires and we met the farmer where we were planting on his land because having 25 students planting for four hours just does so much. But actually hearing the farmer talk about what it meant to him to have the students come out and what it meant to him to have his land damaged and to have that sort of small thing of you know, the community doing something. I think it was quite a, an important thing for the students. So since the project begun, we've now planted over 27,000 trees. One of the other things that happened quite early on, um, people heard about the project and I had a call from an organisation called Hot Rock who were keen to put permaculture gardens in high schools. There's quite a lot of permaculture gardens in primary schools but not high schools and they rang up and said would you like $50,000 for a permaculture garden and I said yes. Then I had to look around the school and find a teacher who might take the project on because it's the student engagement that of course the teachers do. The home economics people use it and learn about food miles and society and environment use it talking about where food comes from and production and comparing it with what happens overseas and one of the English teachers used it and structured English lessons around permaculture and the understanding of language. So the garden can be a way of understanding how we fit in the world. Enjoy it for goodness sake, it's a good day. Yeah. I'm Leo Conti, I'm uh, one of the heads of the department at South Rio Senior High School and uh, welcome to one of my classrooms. We talk about uh, values, we talk about skills and we talk about content. Well our content's here. Right in here, and here's my content that I actually work with. My skills, well, that's all around me, and showing the kids how to actually uh, plant the material, how to actually use what we have, and use it in a really sensible and in a manner which, which respects conservation. And very much, we look at values, which I'm trying to remember, besides recycling, reusing. Help me out here. Recycling, uh, Hang on a sec, this is where we use our students. What's our uh, three, three R's? Recycling, reuse, and? Don't you just love it when it comes together? Reduce. I actually say our fourth, and our fourth important value, is to rethink. If we start to rethink, we start to get some balance together. And in many ways, that's what brings in our curriculum in s &E, uh, with the carbon neutral and the actual sustainability programs that we run here. This year what we're doing is uh, using this classroom here to uh, plant our, our, our soup beds. We're going to harvest what we're growing here, take it down into the canteen, clean it, prepare it, cook it, and then actually sell it at lunchtime as a very healthy soup back to the students. And whatever money we make, well, we uh, allow the cycle to replenish the garden. So that really fits in with the Carbon Neutral Project. It's, it's not just about light bulbs and hot water systems anymore. It's embedded through the whole of this curriculum. And, and then that's part of the national curriculum as well, is building sustainability into the school curriculum. So we kind of got a head start on that, which has worked really well for us. The other thing is the, the PNC has been quite supportive of the Carbon Neutral Working Group and I come up with ideas, um, things to do that I think will fit into the Carbon Neutral ideal and which aren't necessarily about infrastructure. My idea to have a, a growers market at the school, I'm very supportive of growers markets, the idea that we can support farmers, we can reduce our food miles, the farmers get the direct income instead of all those middle people in between. And the Carbon Neutral Working Group said that's a great idea. The farmers market is actually owned by the, the PNC and uh, it runs at the school every Sunday. We have 50 stalls and it's a great community event every week. And the grass out the front looks really lovely, but nobody ever uses it. It's just this acres of, I see it as acres of mowing and water. But now it's actually used for something good. The profits from the market go to the PNC and they get redistributed in the school 
for me, that's, that's such a win, that money that wasn't available goes to the farmers, goes to the PNC, comes back to the school. And teachers put in for grants from the PNC. One of the things we did this year was the PNC supported uh, a year eight camp. So every student could go on a camp. Students in a mixed demographic school like this, some kids never have gone on holidays anywhere. And I just thought, that's, that's something we can do something about. Every student can start year eight having a great experience, meeting new students from other schools, starting doing something fun. We have 26 beds in the permaculture garden. And one of the difficulties with curriculum is if you do planting in weeks one and two, then you move on to the next module. And by the time the things are ready to pick at the end of the term, that's all been factored in. But the bits in between, the curriculum may be taking you in some other direction. And I became aware of the kind of a lack of um, ongoing maintenance. I went down to the Fremantle, City of Fremantle's um, volunteer centre and said, registered for volunteers to come and work in the school. And at the same time, um, Hot Rock had asked a local woman, Sparkles, to write a permaculture module. And she said, I really need to work with some students to see if this is going to work you know, while I'm writing it up. So I said, pick us, pick us. So Sparkles came in and worked with a group of students as she's writing the permaculture module for a term. And she was working in the garden at the same time, working with the volunteers. And since that time, the PNC now um, pay Sparkles to work four hours a week in the garden, which the money, of course, comes from the farmer's market. So she coordinates the volunteers, and the volunteers learn about permaculture. They give it their time. There's a great exchange and mutually beneficial. Stephanie Jennings, who did our audit initially, then became a member of the Carbon Neutral Working Group. And in her role working for the South Metropolitan Regional Council, she came up with this idea of South Fremantle High School being the lead school working with our primary schools. The way the department is set up, each high school has a number of cluster primary schools that feed students up. In our case, we have six feeder primary schools. So all the primary schools in our area are part of a carbon neutral cluster and all of those principals have rung me at some time or other to ask advice on how to progress um, their greenhouse reduction strategies. And they've they since had audits done. One of the primary schools I heard a couple of weeks ago, their audit identified that they had a substantial gas leak. The gas was being used all through the summer holidays. Well, there's nobody at the school, so there should be no gas being used. When they got the department to come out and check that, and they were able to say, you know, we know that we shouldn't be using any gas at this period because we have this audit that says so, they identified 37 gas leaks. So they've got their whole gas system replaced. Um, obviously it needed doing, but that wasn't identified until there was an audit done, and that was, audit wasn't done until they joined the carbon neutral cluster. A lot of schools have had an audit done, and that's all it's done. There's no follow-up because there's no time. I think the success of the Carbon Neutral Project at this school has been that the school have employed someone to do the work. I actually don't go around checking up on people, but because I'm here, people have changed their behaviour. I haven't sort of ticked anybody off and said, I was at your classroom at three o'clock and you'd left the lights on. But just having the presence and the awareness has actually changed a lot of behaviour in a subtle way. And I'm, I hope that it's actually changed people's behaviour at home. I think it's probably harder to change teenagers' behaviour um, and that'll be an ongoing thing, but um, teenagers are obviously, well, generally quite egocentric. <laughs> There's a lot of goodwill for this project. I, I don't know quite what that is, that um, people seem to be interested in, in the broader community and, um, yeah, and the school is increasingly interested. When I first started here, I think it would be fair to say the principal was very supportive and, but, and some of the staff were fabulous. They were immediately engaged and attended the carbon neutral breakfast in, you know, in their own time. However, there was quite a lot of staff who were, oh yeah, well, this is the next best thing. How long is she going to be here? Nobody said that, of course, but I kind of got that feeling. So they needed to see that 
this was a sustainable project for them to engage in it wholeheartedly and that's happened over time and uh, there's some learning areas who engage more easily such as science and society and environment but individual teachers across the curriculum switch on to it. We had a new principal and she was keen to get some feedback from the school community, the parents, the teachers and the students on what they thought about the school. I think it was 90% of students identified the Carbon Neutral Project as something that made their school different. We've progressed a lot from like where we started off. Now that we've got like the veggie patch, the, uh, the green gardens and all that, and we've, we're the first carbon neutral school in Australia. <coughs> we are. Keeping the world healthy for not, not our generation, but our kids' generation, yeah. their kids' generation. Planning ahead. Better in the environment. And if we start now, even though we probably have left it a little bit late, um, we can reduce the impacts of what will happen in the next hundred years or so. A lot of schools are taking up the, uh, the whole climate change sort of... To copy. Yeah, to copy us. <laughs> but the fact that so many of them actually knew about the Carbon Neutral Project, because you just think sometimes this could go straight over their head. But, but so they were switched onto it, and, and a lot of that's due, due to their particular learning areas where their teachers have made the link to whatever they're doing in cars, back to what I'm doing. That's the way you've got to think about the environment. Think about the next person. The next person. That's good. The beauty of the Carbon Neutral Project is that it just encompasses everything. And the most powerful thing for me has been to see that it really sits so well and resonates so strongly with this local community around Fremantle. It's actually found its feet, I think, um, and we saw that really strongly at the Community Cabinet last year when the Prime Minister came here. Um, the reception, for example, that I got when I made a welcoming speech at that forum, which primarily centred around the Carbon Neutral Project, the endorsement that I got back from people at the end of that was just amazing. Much stronger and more positive than I would have ever dreamed, really. And it really adds some heart and soul to our school. We got involved last year, in September of 2011, Peter Newman, Professor Peter Newman, who's the director at CUSP where we're both doing our PhDs, told us about the Carbon Neutral Committee at South Fremantle and suggested that we come along to some of the meetings to have a chat to them because we're both quite involved in this area in greenhouse gas management and carbon management. And the school had yeah, expressed interest in, in applying for the NCOS uh, certification and they, they didn't have, I guess, the skills or the knowledge to and how to calculate the, the carbon footprint. For us it was a really experimental process in finding how to calculate all of this and it took us quite a few months to, <laughs> to get the whole hours. process sorted but um, now it's great we've got this, this template and this process that for other schools to, to be able to follow as well. Uh, and not just what Sam and I have been doing with the actual certification but using South Fremantle as, a, as an example their whole model, how they, they started with a carbon neutral committee, then they employed a carbon neutral project officer, then they you know, implemented successfully all these um, emission reduction techniques and oh, retain measures. Retain their savings. We're able to retain their savings from the government to reinvest that back into the program. I think we think that that just provides this perfect model. There's a lot of other benefits that we discussed with the, the staff as well and simple things like reducing the use of lights and increasing daylight. Now there's lots of studies around the world that actually show that this is a better environment for students to learn in and that's what we're progressing to now as part of the Carbon Neutral Committee. We're looking at how to improve each individual classroom within the school. So Carbon Neutral status is just one part of the process but I think one of the key lessons is that it's it's an ongoing commitment. It's not just a Carbon Neutral stamp. And we're seeing more and more that you know staff the teachers are getting involved in the process as well now. There's a buzz. And yeah. Yeah, it's really it's exciting. exciting. I think what's, what's very exciting um, for us is to be involved with this process to say that we actually were involved in the, having the first carbon neutral school in Australia, officially certified. That's, yeah. that's a great achievement and something that the entire school should be proud of, um, that we're proud of and that, that other schools can, can look to South Fremantle and Senior High School now as an example of what is possible. The issues today are bigger than I used to be Like global warming and all that junk we see Today's the day we change to make it better This is better than writing a letter I'm 
the rudy yeah. So please don't see me low I'm going to listen and go with the flow I will do anything to live in the past But the time I'm giving goes way too fast